No. Salute omnes. Haven't posted in a bit. Sonata's Populusque Romanus flag. I started posting on my new channel, which has... Well, which will have stuff on um, ancient Roman culture and history and anthropology, uh, Stoic philosophy, things like how makeup was made, um, how did they dye their hair, uh, how did they dye textiles. I started doing some encaustic painting, so that's like beeswax plus pigment, and then you either use Damara resin or uh, carnauba wax as a hardener. And I was at a, an art event. I, I did a thing downtown where I did a, a live painting, but that wasn't related. But I had some of the stuff down there with um, you know, scrolls, and I'm making my own sandals. And I made you know, this costume, which there's not much to it. There's still pins. You can see a pin there. Um, and the sleeves. And my palette is kind of shitty right now. It's, it's just like four yards of nylon, but it, it was it was cheap. So um, The tunic and the stola that I made are made out of microfiber sheets. They should have been wool, but you know, it is what it is. So anyway, that's some of what I've been doing, and I just broke the the brooch thing I was trying to attach this with, so now I have this giant, giant pin. So I'll be doing the usual stuff on this channel, and then basically the ancient Roman stuff, as well as eventually getting into the Latin language over there on the other channel. Making costumes, um, learning about encaustic painting, learning how to make makeup the way it was made uh, thousands of years ago. Whole cock and ale bugs. Oh, now you can read it. 25 grams. And it makes a reddish, reddish pink dye. I think it's like a fuchsia dye, but anyway, it's they're little beetles. But uh, a lot of food coloring in the past was made with those. And then, I'm not sure if it's the same as carmine, so I'll be messing around with those. A little bit. I tried making lipstick out of, let's see, beeswax, uh, oil, uh, coconut oil, hibiscus flowers. I'm growing my own hibiscus out there too, but they're just like these tiny sprouts right now, so no flowers yet. So I ended up buying hibiscus powder pigment, and I tried painting with that, and that worked well. I'm also, do I have it? You probably can't see it. It's, it's hibiscus and cherry tea because it's also used for flavor. It adds like tartness to teas that are, you know, cherry or raspberry, herbal teas. And then it also gives them a, a nice red color. So I figure that that's fairly harmless. Gave away a whole bunch of creepy and weird podcast candles and some t-shirts while I was downtown also. So I'll put some video from there. They don't have much video for me. I had my mom's friend like take one picture of me, and then the rest of it's me t taking pictures of other people. And I just painted a, a local person, um, Colonel Drake, who discovered oil in Titusville, PA, and then all these cities are in locations and museums and, you know, wells are named after him. Uh, buying too many books, so I'll probably review some of those. Also got some more Criterion Collection DVDs and some other special editions and things that I'd like to I'd like to review um, performance at some point, which was um, Nicholas Rogue, uh, the director Nicholas Rogue. He also did The Man Who Fell to Earth that starred David Bowie, but that was like a little after this. And performance um, stars Mick Jagger and some others, and uh, names Anita Pallenberg, I think. Anyway, it's fairly psychedelic and such. It's a lot of fun. I thought this was going to be a large flag, but it's like 12 inches tall. So uh, maybe I'll get another one at some point, but that's why it was cheap, I guess. No, you know. So I'll hang that somewhere, too. It's the Senate and the Roman people. Um, hmm. Well, the other thing I was going to do was, um, I've been practicing playing Tomb Raider 1 again. Because I, I used to be able to do it, like... I used to get really good times and get all the secrets and do this from memory without walkthroughs, but I have to sort of practice again. And then, you know, I might do some streams or not, either, either here or on the other channel, but I was thinking on the other channel I will do some, not speed, you know, run-throughs because I want to get the secrets too, but you know, as quickly as I can, since it's a long game, I want to, like, do some playthroughs and narrate the whole thing in Latin. So I've been practicing that, you know, it's like, um, 
you know, Vespertilioni sunt, you know, Cowe, Laura. And, and also her name works well because in Latin, you know, you, you usually have female names that end in an A and the men's names end in a U.S. because sometimes you have to, you know, change how they're spelled. And that's kind of hard to do. The Greek names are done a little differently, too, but, you know, good to stick with the A and U.S. endings whenever possible. So I don't know if I'm going to, you know, use my real name or use my old, you know, Latin name that my old Latin teacher gave me, which was was Amata, because that it ends in an A, so that, that's kind of easier to use. Also, just been burned out as all hell from doing the thing downtown and getting a whole bunch of stuff ready for that, and like learning how to do other methods of painting and making my own paint and, you know, cutting up pieces of plywood to paint on. So I wanted to do egg tempera, but then you need to get the rabbit skin glue as little dried pellets, and then you like boil it or something and with chalk to make gesso for sizing the the canvas or wood or whatever. So I didn't know about that, and I decided that might be too much work, and I didn't feel like buying anything more. So I'm like, well, I have beeswax because I was going to make candles with it. So I ended up using the beeswax for the paint. And you can use, you know, all kinds of cool stuff for that. You know, like iron oxide for a reddish orange. And then there's a black iron oxide, which was also used for eyeliner, along with olive oil. And I was going to talk about, you know, the Roman baths, the, the strigil thing, which was like, they, they put olive oil on themselves and like scraped the oil, the extra oil off. And then that takes the dirt off of you also. And also because I have dry skin, I, I once had a dermatologist who said, you know, instead of roughly towel drying after a bath, just put olive oil on yourself and the water will kind of go away. And it also makes your skin soft. So, you know, that's been interesting. And then I think also of bath bombs and such that, and before bath bombs, we had those little, those little oil, bath oil spheres which make, you know, your bath water less drying. And then I think just the whole idea of the Roman baths, and they had, like, the cold bath and the tepid bath, a hot bath, like a hot tub, and then they had a swimming pool and all these other exercise rooms and a library sometimes, um, lecture hall, all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, in the bathhouses. But that kind of goes to the the modern idea of self-care also is, you know, relaxing, and they would also go there to socialize. Some of the the rich people would have their own private bathtub in their home, but they'd still, you know, visit the, the bathhouses in order to socialize, and just for the, the general, you know, experience. So I was also going to talk about, you know, co- the costuming and, and such. Like, this is, I'm just wearing the tunic now, which is, it's, um, this comes a little past my knees, and it has long sleeves, of course. And then I'm going to trim it with some, I think it's called gimp braid. And then the stola is a sleeveless dress that goes on top of this. And it's, you know, I made mine a bit more flared and it's floor length. But I didn't feel like wearing that now because I'm sitting down anyway. If I, you know, make videos outdoors, I, I will wear all the things in the pala, which is the draped fabric. So I'll be going through all that. And I also uh, really want to make papyrus scrolls. Those being, you know, the, the earliest form of books. So I made some... Well, I used dowel rods and put and glued little end pieces on them to make some... Uh, they're not very fancy, but whatever. And then I'm going to buy, you know, 10 or 20 sheets of papyrus. And then you glue them together to make a really long piece of papyrus. And roll it around the scroll bar. And then you would carry these around in your book bag. You know, as it were, before, you know, the, the modern types of books with pages and covers were made. So I also wanted to get, not octopus ink, cuttlefish, cuttlefish ink, because that's used in food also, in some Italian food. I've bought pasta that, that is covered, colored that way, and I, I've seen these fun recipes for, like, you know, Halloween pasta, and, and you put shrimp, because that... You know, it gives you this orange color, and then you have your, your black spaghetti. And then you make a nice sauce for it. Just color the, the pasta yourself when you get the little jar of cuttlefish ink. 
which I have some, but I'm sure it's expired and stinks, so I need to throw that away and buy more. So anyway, the idea of the cuttlefish ink is that that's one of the things that might have been used for writing on the papyrus. Feather feather quill pens. So I, I attempted to make one already, but I need more practice with that to make a video on how to do it. And then, you know, dip that in the jar of cuttlefish ink and write on your papyrus. Also, I tried doing the encaustic painting using the heat gun, but that would have been normally done with candles since uh, they didn't have electricity, so I'm going to try that also. Um, henna, which was used for hair dye, and they also did things with like vinegar. In Italy, a lot of them had dark hair, so of course they'd see the Germanic tribes and say, hey, blonde hair seems cool, you know, and then they'd buy real human hair blonde wigs from Germanic tribes and such. And they also liked elaborate hairstyles, like th this would, like my hair right now would look barbaric to them. I mean, I only did a couple of tiny braids here, rather than giant weird beehives and, you know, all braids piled on top of your head. I thought of buying a laurel tree, but I, I haven't. It's not a tree, it's a, a hedge, I think. It's a, some sort of bush. I, t I talked to a, an old friend who says her mother has one, and they're pretty neat. But they're also, like, expensive. Like, like two seeds were $25. I'm like, no, uh, if I'm going to pay 30 bucks for something, you know, they, they'd better at least sprout it for me and put it in a put it in a container, you know, and make sure the seeds are viable. But I did start growing hibiscus and basil, um, oregano. And also with the henna, I, I guess they used it in Egypt to paint their, their fingernails, you know, as a form of nail polish, except it's not like this... You know, hard en enamel paint. It's not like a hard enamel paint that sits on top of the nail. It's just, you know, gonna stain the nail. And then also, and it would have been used to dye the hair either red or dye it back to a brown or black color. And even now, you can buy kits that have henna plus indigo powder. And if you use them together, it gives you a nice blue black. And just trying to get more stuff listed in the store. So I don't have to spend all my time working and, you know, uh, work all fucking day, make very few monies, as they say. Some molds of some of the Silent Hill figures that I made, you know, years ago also. I'm going to have to, like, re-sculpt some of them, but I'm going to put those into clay because they don't really have faces yet. But other than that, I'm just going to make a video to, to say I, I didn't die or anything. It's just been, like, so busy with real life stuff that I was just burned out and then trying to get another channel done and making all these crafts and writing all these scripts for the other channel, which I, I don't have anything but the intro video but the intro video channel trailer thing up there anyway. Also I think comments are disabled because I, I put it under educational and child friendly, so I'm not allowed to swear there. Would appreciate any subs so I can eventually get a normal sounding channel URL rather than this weird a long list of random numbers and letters. And I think that's about it. But, um, later friends.